To be a good midfielder, you should be able to have the ability to return the ball when you're being pressured by your opponent. That's why in this video, with these moves that I'm going to teach you, you will be able to know or learn how to return the ball while being pressured by your opponent. And if you're joining the channel for the first time, please, I urge you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, share, like, and comment on this video, and turn on your notification bell in order to get my weekly tutorial. And without more further ado, follow me, let me teach you and guide you how you can get these moves done. Come on. We're going to look at the, the row push movement. The row push movement is, um, like I said, if you want to be a good midfielder, if you want to be a good midfielder, you should have the ability to return, uh, to return the ball. Some of the moves you just watch uh, can be called the, the row push. The row push is, uh, like I treated on my ball receiving prowess. If, you, if you've not seen my receiving the ball, you should go and check it out. First of all, like I said on those clips or in that video, before you receive the ball, you must make sure that you move two step or three step in. You can't be stagnant, you can't wait for the ball. That's one rule, that's one of the things you don't want to do, you can't wait for the ball. Because if you wait for the ball, there's high tendency of the ball being intercepted or the ball being anticipated by your opponent. Okay, assuming that you take for example, as a midfielder, expect every time for people to crowd you or to players to crowd you. So the last thing you want to do is to wait for the ball before you receive it. You cannot wait for the ball. So some of the moves that I made, you must move two or three steps forward to receive the ball. Those two or three steps that you make forward is what's going to help you to be able to number one, guide it and receive with your shoe, your shoe sole. Okay. With the teeth of your boot, when you receive the ball, you push. That's the trick. If you move two or three steps forward, that is number one. That shows that you are ready to anticipate and protect the ball. You're protecting with your left leg and you're receiving. Now you're, you're not receiving with your inside foot. You're not receiving with your outside foot. What that is, which is the worst thing you, you want to do to receive the ball with your outside of the foot. So in this case, you receive with your... So this is all about gliding the ball. So about gliding the ball and change a direction first thing you have to put into consideration is when you are going to glide the ball you have to always do one two or three step forward to get the ball you cannot wait for the ball right then your second leg moving back with it i mean how or the direction you want to turn or how far you want to push the ball away from your marker or confuse the person marking you either from the side or this side I just want you to know one thing, roll push is not a name that is being given to this, okay? It's just something that I carved out, okay? Um, I call it roll push because of you have to roll the ball with the top, with the top, with the top of your shoe sole or your boot sole and your second leg movement, leg movement will determine how perfect or how effective the movement is going to become, right? And mind you, you are changing the dynamic of the game. You're changing the dynamic of the game when you are changing this direction because you're changing the dynamic of the game from disguising that you're moving to this place whereas you want to change to different direction right so you glide the ball you glide the ball with your shoe teeth this way then your movement so it's all about glide move once again when you run, you see the ball. Crofton is all the football enthusiasts and I believe that uh, for you to be on this channel you must have some level of 
understanding or knowledge about the game. The Crofton is popular and the Crofton was made popular by Johan Croft or the Dutch technician who played the game at a very high level and that the mother of positional football. Croft believed that the ball moved faster than than human. Um, the ball moved faster than human. The same philosophy that the same philosophy that Croft has, that's what he passed across to to Pep Guardiola, who is um, arguably the greatest manager in the history of the game right now. So, and he believes that the ball moves more faster than human beings. I believe some people will argue that Crofton may not be some moves that you can make in the striking position, you can as well execute it in the defensive or the, the midfield position. You just need to know the situation where you're applying the move. You can use any, any skill that you deem fit. It doesn't matter if you're a striker, it doesn't matter if you're in a striking position or in the midfield position. If you can execute the move properly and make good use of it at the right time, in that particular moment, in order to get away from a situation or in order to create a different dynamic or movement or variation for the game, then why not do it? Go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter, like I said, in this channel, I'm going to treat uh, the moves for strikers that you can use to score goals. Moves like snake bite. Moves like snake bite. So this particular clip, I'll bring you Bosket again and I'm going to show you some little clips from Bosket executing Crofton as well. And um, in these few clips, in these few clips that are going to come up, you will see how Crofton is being used, uh, how it's being applied in a situation, maybe in a goal scoring opportunity or creating a different dynamic for the game. You can as well do Crofton, you can as well do Crofton when the ball is uh, coming from up. It's not only when the ball is on the ground. So, but you just know how you should touch the ball. That's what matters. How you should touch the ball and cushion your ball. And let me say this. This is very important. For Crofton to be well executed, you have to put some key notes into consideration. Number one is or you know, your non-kicking foot, which is this one. Always, I always place so much emphasis on this leg because he plays a whole lot of role. Now, as he's playing a role of a sheet, the position of this leg the position of this leg uh, to execute the turn matters a lot. The position of this leg matters a lot. If it is here, if the position of your leg is here, you can't get the turn. It will be very far for you to step in, to move this way. And you can enjoy yourself in the process. It's a very, very important point. Your leg cannot be, in, cannot be far away, too far away from the ball. Right. Your leg, your non-kicking foot will be playing two, will be playing double role. Here, this position, creating balance for you, creating balance for you, and at the same time, creating a shade for you to turn. Right. That is very important. That's very, that is very essential. Essential part of crop turn. This leg being here is very important. If you keep it here, you can execute this turn properly. But if it's here or even a little bit away, put it a little bit away from the ball, then must not cannot can also be done if the ball is coming from up. But it will take a lot of a very good skill or a skillful player to be to execute that. Um, you should start always if you're learning a new skill newly, don't go to the high level start from the ground we all know that the learning process should be a gradual process start learning first of all where you place your leg okay like I said before your left leg has to be that close to the ball to execute this skill or this move properly your left leg which is your non shooting or using food uh, should be should act as number one as a guardian to the ball and number two uh, a sort of dynamic changing tool to move or to turn how it's supposed to turn now if your leg is here you get a signal to the person that is marking you on what you want to do that means you don't want to continue your movement if the ball is in this position but if it's just here it can be any move the person wouldn't know 
what you are about to do but this is too is too close it's too close you have to move keep your leg distance you have to distance your leg keep it in this few inches away not too close you can also do it being i mean in this position but i think the best way to do it and get it properly is when your leg is half this few inches okay you don't want to move your leg you don't want to move your leg far away okay if you move it far away yes you may get it but it shows that one if your leg is far away from the ball it shows that you are either breaking the ball or you're changing direction two things are involved okay you're sending a very clear signal to the person pressing you or marking you or the attacking midfielder the attacking midfielder or the striker whoever that is marking you or creating you're sending him a signal that you want to change other movement direction or dynamic right so you don't want to what you don't want to do as a player in executing a move is to show signal on what you are trying to do or what you're about to do so when you keep your leg the place to keep your leg is close a little bit a little bit but in line i mean my advice to you is is either you put it up a little bit little bit front little bit but you can't keep your leg this way no i mean you can only do one thing then you can only do one thing doing the move the reverse move that we just get the clip you just watch that's the only thing you can do here putting back before going back okay that's the only thing you can do in this situation if your leg is far away but cross on your leg should be close to the ball then but then what you're going to use is the here here the place you use to shoot your knuckle shot the position of the boot you use to shoot your knuckle shot is what your position you have to use to turn the ball okay and mind you the movement of the ball has to be in a line and the pace of the ball the movement the speed or the pace of the ball has to be in a line or has to be in synchronized or has to be in synchronism <laughs> okay don't allow the ball to run more than you don't make a move that is gonna put you in a situation whereby the ball is running and you're playing a catch-up to the ball okay guys let's get going Now so much different now so much different from now so much different from the receiving system of the roll push is the reverse turn let me not sound like i'm using basket as a study but it's one of those who have good knowledge of the game how to really create how to really retain the ball in the midfield without losing it you know what makes you a good midfielder is ability your ability to retain the ball either to allow your team to recover or to allow your team to stabilize the tempo of the game or the dynamic of the game is going to be changed in the midfield so that is why if you have somebody who is intelligent who is a quick decision maker who can really know how to retain the ball or how to change the dynamic of the game in the dm role not as attacking midfielder role attacking midfielder role is different that is supporting striker right you support the striking force and also play a uh, sometimes deep sometimes you play a little bit deep with the cm okay but what you don't want to do unless unless you're playing 10 man against 11 what you don't want to do is attacking midfielder playing too deep up to the dm road you don't want to do that right you can stop within you can stop within the cm play along with the cm connect with the far left or the far right okay the front tray the front tray you just need to support them depending on how many strikers your team is playing depending on the formation that your team is playing and also connect 
with the central midfield. Central midfield, which is responsible for changing the direction that is the heart, okay? as the name implies, central, central midfield. Now, sometimes in some situations, uh, the coach or the team may decide to play double four. Right? That will be a different ball game altogether. So it all depends on how you want to use the players or how you want to use the midfield as a coach. Now, like they always say, or like they always say, or some coaches always say, there is no right or wrong in football as long as you can get the result. What matters is how you can get your result delivered. Okay, but at the same time, contrary to how we receive the ball, the ball on the rope push, contrary to how we receive the ball on the rope push, the reverse turn is the same way we receive the ball from maybe either this direction or this direction. Okay, but the only difference is the fact that we have to move this ball this way. Right. You reverse turn. You receive the ball with this guy. It's easy, it's easy, but I do. One thing you must take into is the fact that when you are receiving this ball, when you are receiving this ball, you have to move your speed, your pace, your anticipation, and your movement has to be in synchronized. So you cannot just move and without you having appropriate scanning and aware of who is behind you, you cannot just you cannot just do this you can't just do this you have to be aware you have to be aware what is what is at your back okay in order not to lose the ball in the process of trying to create a dynamism or trying to create a dynamic or trying to stabilize the midfield trying to retain the ball or trying to retain the ball or stabilize your team to change a different or have a different approach to the game you should be this is where awareness or this is where awareness comes to play again, right? But it's all about you receiving the ball. You can see the way I move. See the way I move. You can move depending on the distance, how many meters away. In some situations, you don't have to move. Just you have to move. But in some situations, you just this way. Simple. Let's say you have some opening, opening space behind this player, right? You have some opening space behind this player. You don't want to, maybe the movement of the game is towards this way. Now for you to change the dynamic and these guys, this player right here at the time is. Now see, step I move have shifted me away from, from this player. Then I have my opening here. Then this. Now what I'm trying to do right here is to get myself away from this marker at the same time guided my ball but what you have to put into consideration is if you're a slow midfielder or if you're a slow player and you want to do this reverse turn against a player or a striker or a presser who is faster which you are aware because we all know our speed we all know our we all know ability we all know our speed we all know our pace the level of our pace we all know the fast strikers in the field you have to make sure that this is not a player who is faster not that you have to make sure that this is a player whose speed is not faster than yours if not you don't have to move this ball too far away from you so that will give you a close or good that will give you a clear knowledge of how you're going to move Thank you guys for watching this video if you like it and you want to improve your football knowledge and IQ I urge you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel share like and comment on this video and turn on your notification bell to get my in order to get my weekly update on football tutorial next time I remain your humble host and coach coach Charles see ya